In this episode, I tell the story of the early years of William Woodley and his life at Stanmore. This video follows on from my earlier video entitled William Woodley – An Introduction. William Woodley was born in Oxford on March 9th, 1846 and six years later he was, on the death of his mother, placed in the care of a great aunt on the maternal side. This good lady lived at Stanmore, a small hamlet of Beedon, near Newbury, and was one of several beekeepers of the old school who kept bees in skeps in a few surrounding gardens. When the boy William was considered capable of walking two miles to the village school, he was duly installed as a scholar therein, and upon reaching the age of seven, his services were requisitioned during the six or seven weeks of each succeeding swarming season for the purposes of what the old lady called minding the bees. The tedious monotony of the task was only relieved when a swarm or several swarms issued. Then, to the boy's delight, came the banging of tin pots, pans and all various means of creating a noise familiar to old-fashioned village bee life and when several bee owners were tanging at the same time you may imagine the pleasurable excitement aroused by the din. When the young William arrived at Stanmore the landscape possessed many ancient features and the country folk living there still lived by folklore, tradition and superstition. Stanmore had attracted the attention of antiquarians and their writings give a glimpse of the environment and people. There is an entry in the 1861 Berkshire Archaeological Journal which describes Stanmore. The whole neighbourhood, moreover, is interesting, for within a hundred feet is seen the Roman road, still called Old Street, and where the Stanmore Road branches off there is a large tumulus on which, until within the last few years, there grew an old yew tree. There is a tale repeated by the peasantry that every time they have begun to excavate to discover its contents, a violent storm of thunder and lightning has compelled them to desist. A short time ago, while removing the turf for agricultural purposes, they opened, as far as I could learn, a cyst or a small barrow rudely formed with stones which lay on the old street and which contained a large fragment of a broken bronze spearhead. In the book called The History and Antiquities of the Hundred of Compton Berkshire, written by William Hewitt in 1844, Hewitt writes, Among the other ridiculous stories and puerile superstitions respecting this tumulus, the peasantry relate that it is inhabited by fairies, and that a certain ploughman having broken his shear and gone home to procure some tools found on his return that the plough had already been mended. Stanmore was enclosed in 1856 and Mr Woodley explained in later years that many enclosure acts which have done away with former rights and put an end to the gorse and the heather and the wild thyme that helped to fill the honey pot with enclosure acts, the commons have passed away, along with their wealth of blossom during the greater part of the year, i.e. the gorse, the broom, the heather, the wild flowers in continued succession. The fields under cultivation are not what they were a decade ago in the matter of honey producing plants. High cultivation having given place to a condition approaching, in some instances, wild nature. In 1859 William Woodley was apprenticed to a firm of grocers at Cheveley in Berkshire. Being naturally of a mechanical turn of mind he displayed a special fondness for handling watches and clocks, this proving a more congenial occupation than the grocery business and having gained a fair insight into the subject he returned to Beedon and started business for himself in the watch and clock trade. The old pursuit of beekeeping was resumed 
in a small way with straw skeps. A revolution was taking place in beekeeping. In 1861 Langstroth discovered the bee space which led to the design of a truly movable frame hive. Abby Collin invented the queen excluder which separated the brood from the honey in the hive. Also during this period cell impregnated wax foundation for hive frames was invented. These three discoveries or inventions led to a box hive with truly removable frames and efficient collection of honey. Honey production could be organised akin to an industrial scale. The skep and the sulphur pit could be replaced by something more humane and productive. It was envisaged that the plight of the cottager would be improved. This concludes this episode of the story of William Woodley. I intend to make more videos in the near future, so please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. You can support my channel by hitting the like button and commenting in the section below. Thank you for watching and bye for now.